The Door in the Wall is a short story by H. G. Wells, published in 1911. It is a first-person framed narrative by the character Redmond who acts as the primary narrator narrating Lionel Wallace's tale with a disclaimer of it being a true story. This short story is a science fiction with elements of fantasy and mystery. The Door in the Wall explores the idea of people wanting to escape from their everyday lives and find a perfect, ideal world. The narrator is sure that Wallace's story is true due to Wallace's simplicity of conviction, even though it seems unbelievable, frankly incredible and a fantastic dream. The story begins by suggesting that it might not be entirely trustworthy but still reassures readers about its truthfulness, letting the reader judge for himself. The credibility is added to the tale from the solid and educated background of the characters in the story who are well-off and upper-class having attended an expensive private school in Kensington. Wallace's scholarship to Oxford, his extremely successful career that enabled his high government post. The story revolves around whether Wallace's magical door and garden were real or just an imagination, but it never definitively answers this question. Instead, it shifts focus to the deeper truth within Wallace's experiences. When Wallace dies in a tragic accident, it initially appears to confirm the story's unreality, but the narrator suggests that Wallace had a special gift, seeing a different world. This implies that whether the door and garden were real or not isn't the most important thing, it's about the profound impact of visionary experiences. The garden symbolizes his idea of a perfect world, a utopia. It was a place where he could escape from his dull and joyless childhood. Wallace, when he was young, discovered a magical door leading to a perfect, dreamlike world of love and happiness. It's unclear whether this place was real or imaginary, but what's important is that Wallace believes he can return to it. The door reappears in his life at various times, but every time he tries to step through it, his real-world responsibilities interfere. Whether it's going to school, visiting his dying father, or attending work meetings, he can't go back to that magical place. This garden symbolizes a perfect past that Wallace can never reach. It's a place of beauty and peace that he has longed for throughout his life. But, his adult responsibilities always get in the way, making it impossible to return. In one instance, he chooses his career over the door and ends up falling to his death in a pit. While it's left open to interpretation whether he reaches the garden in death, it's clear that in life, he can't attain this idealized past. His obsession with it damages his relationships and keeps him from fully experiencing the present. Wallace's pursuit of success in his career stops him from entering the door, but his idealized past also prevents him from living in the present. The more he gets involved with the real world, the less he longs for the past. The story illustrates how nostalgia for a lost past can give life meaning but also distort one's perception of the present. Lionel Wallace is extraordinary from a young age, excelling in school and work, and poised for a successful government career. His accomplishments make others envious, but there's a twist. He has these vivid childhood memories of a magical garden behind a green door, a place filled with happiness and contentment. Every time he encounters the door in adulthood, it's during decisive moments for his success and he always chooses not to open it. The story suggests that peace and prosperity don't easily mesh together. Wallace's ambition is fueled by high expectations, but even when he achieves success, he feels empty. His life is full of accomplishments, yet he's unsatisfied and bitter. The story constantly contrasts the joy of the garden with the demands of the competitive world, suggesting that you can't have both. Wallace's life is a battle between his desire for contentment and his pull towards success, and he never finds a resolution. The door appears only when he's faced with critical choices, making him choose one path over the other, never both. Wallace realizes that choosing success often means sacrificing contentment, just as pursuing contentment requires giving up the pursuit of success. The story ultimately questions whether all the sacrifices for success are truly worth it, as it may lead to a life that feels empty and unsatisfying. In this tale, it seems that having one often means sacrificing the other.